will start with this uh, slide on course overview uh, which shows uh, the title of this course uh, continuum mechanics and transfer phenomena of course that splits into continuum mechanics part and transfer phenomena part um, in that we are going to start with the fluid mechanics part and within that fluid mechanics you are going to start with uh, fundamental concepts okay. uh, that is highlighted here. Fundamental concepts has um, several uh, topics in it. First we start with, start with the continuum hypothesis uh, where we discuss what we mean by uh, the term continuum. Then we discuss uh, two approaches for describing uh, flow one is uh, following the fluid flow and one is at a particular point and then we discuss a substantial derivative, a derivative which is something special to continuum mechanics and transfer phenomena, a general transfer phenomena. Then uh, we discuss how do we visualize flow patterns and then more importantly we discuss uh, what do we mean by a system which is same as the system we come across in the thermodynamics course and then a control volume which is uh, representing maybe a heat exchanger, a reactor, etc. Okay. And then uh, the laws of physics are stated for the system. Uh, we need conservation equations for the control volume. So, we need a theorem which takes us from system the control volume and that is the Reynolds transport theorem. So, we discuss that at the end. Okay. So, these uh, topics will be covered over a few lectures. Okay, so, let us start with the term uh, continuum hypothesis. Uh, what you see here is a uh, uh, beaker of uh, water and uh, if you see it with the naked eye, you feel uh, it is completely filled with uh, water, but now if you keep uh, zooming in, zooming in, magnifying, magnifying it and then if you magnify to a large extent, you will see water molecules there and then there are white spaces. Okay. So, uh, fluid appears as continuous to the naked eye, but at the molecular level it is made of uh, molecules. Okay. Now, and there are empty spaces between the molecules uh, as we have seen. Now, uh, we want to quantify fluid properties on the microscopic uh, length scale which is at the scale of the uh, water in the beaker and let us say a few millimeters, a few micrometers uh, in the volume in the beaker and we are not going to quantify on the molecular length scale which is the scale of uh, nanometers okay? and which means that we are going to ignore all the molecular uh, uh, details and uh, assume fluid as a continuous medium that is what we mean by continuum hypothesis. Okay? Though at the molecular uh, level it is made up of molecules you are just going to ignore that molecular picture and we are going to say everywhere, everywhere without leaving any space, the space is occupied by liquid or gas whatever matter it is. That is what we mean by continuum hypothesis. Okay. Now, what is the implication of this? All the fluid properties can be taken as continuous uh, functions of space. If you take the molecular picture, there will be discontinuities at these uh, locations. If you assume a continuum hypothesis, you can assume continuous variation of all the fluid properties. Okay. That is the implication of continuum hypothesis. Now, what is the need to make a continuum hypothesis? First of all, you should know it is an artificial model. Why it is artificial model? The reality is actually consists of a lot of molecules of water with void spaces. We are making an approximation to that artificially and that is for convenience. Okay. What is the convenience we are talking about? As we have seen, we are not going to consider the motions of individual molecules, forces acting on them, the velocity distributions, etcetera. All those are not going to be considered. Because we do not consider the molecular details, only we the way in which we discuss involves only fewer and fewer details okay. and we are going to summarize or represent 
behavior of billions of molecules in terms of a uh, few continuous functions. What are those continuous functions? Density, pressure, velocity, temperature, concentration all these are measurable by instruments can measure pressure, can measure velocity, density, temperature, concentration. So, the molecular behavior of billions of molecules is represented by few continuous functions as we have seen continuous functions have values throughout the spatial location which because we ignore molecular behavior and these continuous functions are measurable quantities namely density, pressure, velocity, temperature and concentration. So, these continuous functions indirectly represent the molecular behavior which to be exact we should represent in terms of their velocities, momenta acting on them, forces acting on them etcetera. Okay. Now, uh, what is lost? What is that we have lost? We have lost the molecular behavior and that is not important for engineering purposes. For engineering purposes, we do not talk in terms of forces acting on individual molecules, we do not talk about the molecular velocities, we just talk in terms of variables which we measure uh, in an industry or a day to day activity in terms of density, pressure, velocity, temperature, concentration. So, whatever you have lost is not important from our level of requirement for our level of accuracy. Okay. So, details of molecular arrangement and uh, motion uh, is not is lost, but it is not uh, important for us. Okay. To explain further about this continuum hypothesis, what I have uh, shown here is a small volume, very very uh, small volume and where there are uh, uh, molecules in the inside the uh, volume which I have considered. And now, I am going to vary this volume from very small volume to a very large volume and find out the density within that small volume. Okay. So, I plotted density on the y axis, this volume which you are considering on the x axis. Okay. Now, if I take very very small volume, the number of molecules within that volume is going to be very less, let us say a few molecules, 5 molecules, 10 molecules. So, now every time you make a measurement, there is going to be huge fluctuation in density that is what this region shows you. Sometimes you may get a density here, sometimes as a density here, a density here, a density here. Taking a small volume, the number of molecules are going to be present in that region are going to fluctuate a lot and number of molecules is going to determine the mass and then hence the density and then this is going to fluctuate a lot. Now, you slowly let us say you the measurement volume you increase it, let us say somewhere you are here. Now, more number of molecules are present in that volume let us say a few hundreds. Now, the fluctuation the density is slightly smaller compared to the earlier smaller volume. Number of molecules on average may be varying let us say from 90 to 110, instead of varying from 1 to 10 it may vary from 90 to 100. The variation is going to be less and so that is why the density which you measure or calculate is going to vary over a smaller range compared to this larger range. Now, let us say if you keep increasing the volume, the fluctuation the density decreases almost become without any fluctuation. Okay. So, this volume let us say something kind of optimal uh, volume. So, what we have seen is as you increase the volume which you are going to sample, the fluctuation in the density reduces and becomes almost without any fluctuation. Okay. Now, let us see what happens if you keep increasing the volume further. Now, let us say if you increase the volume, what happens? You are the volume occupied uh, by this uh, region is going to span over a larger region and then you are going to lose out on the spatial variation. Okay. What does it mean? If let us say in this particular room, we have some temperature variation, velocity variation, we want to our, our ultimate objective is to capture the variation spatially also. So, let us say near the air condition the temperature is low, somewhere near the door it is slightly warmer and there is a temperature distribution and velocity distribution as well. Suppose, if your volume keeps increasing and increasing, you lose out on the spatial variation. So, you cannot capture the spatial variation. So, at one end you have a discontinuous and fluctuating nature which you call as molecular uncertainty. So, that is also not preferred. On the other side, if the volume is extremely large, let us say this side 
you lose out on the spatial variation. If you choose a larger volume of course, there would not be any fluctuation, but you would not be able to uh, describe the density across different spatial points or velocity or temperature. Okay. So, we do not want very low uh, sampling volume and then we do not want very large volume al also both are dis disadvantages to us. One is uh, termed as molecular uncertainty, other is called the macroscopic uncertainty. Why is it? Because the volume over which was sampling is large and uh, we are not, we will not be able to describe the spatial variation. That is why I said some optimal volume which we denote here as uh, delta V star, okay, which is not too small, which is not too large as well. Now, what is this volume? What is this roughly, uh, how do you get an idea of this volume? Okay? Uh, based on uh, measurements and simulation, it has been found that if you have 10 power 6 molecules, remember we said few molecules, tens of molecules, hundreds of molecules, thousands of molecules. If in your space there are 10 power 6 molecules, then you are you get some you are somewhere here and you get a stable measurement without any fluctuation. Okay. Now, let us see what is the volume that would contain roughly 10 power 6 molecules. If you use ideal gas law and then at standard conditions of temperature and pressure and then use Avogadro's number of uh, molecules. For the case of air, if you take an extremely small volume of uh, 10 power minus 9 millimeter cube, extremely small volume, you have 10 power 6 10 power 7 molecules of air. Okay. So, very very small volume contains our desired number of molecules. Okay. How, what is the other way of looking at it? Suppose, if you take a cube of 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 by 0 0.1, what does it mean? You let us say you have mil centimeter and then one tenth of that is a millimeter, one tenth of that okay. and you imagine a cube of 0 0.1 each of 0 0.1 side. So, let us say our usual measurement instruments easily occupy that volume, even it is a very very small instrument, it will occupy certainly even more than that, even the most very sharp instrument will occupy 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. What is the number of uh, molecules present in very very small region? 2.5 10 power 13 molecules for air, which means we are far away from the required uh, 10 power 6 molecules. So, even the measurements which are making practically occupies a volume where it is representative of um, much more than 10 power 6 molecules. So, they are somewhere in, in this region only. Okay. So, what I discussed here is um, variation of density with uh, sample volume and uh, we do not want molecular uncertainty, we do not want macroscopic uncertainty, we want a, a small volume which is not very too very small which is not very large has enough number of molecules, so that there are no fluctuations. At the same time, we will be able to capture the spatial variation also. Okay. Okay. How do you quantify this uh, range of val val validity of the continuum hypothesis? So far, we have been discussing qualitatively. We want to put some numbers and quantify this is a region over which continuum hypothesis is valid, over which I can apply my equations. and uh, this region which through uh, over which I cannot apply the equations. So, this whole course we are going to assume continuum hypothesis. So, you should know this region over which the equations which are going to derive the discussions we are going to make in this course are going to be valid. Okay. Now, such a number is called the Knudsen number which is defined as uh, the mean free path divided by the characteristic length. Okay. What is this uh, mean free path? is the average distance travelled by the molecules between successive collisions. The molecules are in constant collision and what is the average distance they travel between two successive collisions. Okay. That is the mean free path. What is the characteristic length? Characteristic length is just length roughly the length of the uh, dimension of the pipe or region over which we have flow is being considered. For example, if you have a flow through a pipe, the diameter of the pipe can be a characteristic length. Okay. So, Knudsen number is defined as the mean free path divided by the characteristic length. The Knudsen number should be much much smaller than 1 and the limit given is 0 0.01. So, all our uh, equations or the scope of this course is for Knudsen number less than 0 0.01. You cannot apply the equations to derive in this course 
the discussions which we uh, do in this course may not be valid when the nuts and number crosses the limit uh, order of 0.01. Okay. Now, uh, let us take an example to get an idea of this. Uh, if you consider air atmospheric pressure, okay, the mean free path is 68 uh, nanometers okay, that can be calculated. Now, let us uh, take this air flowing through uh, let us say pipe of characteristic uh, length of different uh, dimensions shown here. Let us say if it goes through a pipe of 100 millimeter diameter, then the nuts and number is extremely small, much much uh, smaller than 0 0.01. Let us say keep reducing the size of the pipe, let us say air goes through a 10 millimeter pipe, still your nuts and number is small, 1 millimeter pipe your nuts and number is small, 10 microns it is still smaller than 0 0.01, but now if this air flows through a pipe of 1 micron diameter, the nuts and number crosses the limit of 0 0.01. Now, the continuum hypothesis may not be applicable over this range or beyond this. If you go smaller and smaller uh, sizes than this, then continuum hypothesis breaks down. So, our scope of the whole course lies, let us say, lies within um, this region quantified by Knudsen number uh, less than uh, 0.01. Okay. Now, uh, let us take some examples uh, to get an idea where continuum hypothesis is valid and where it is not valid. Okay. Flow of air through a pipe and heat exchanger may be uh, let us say ten, a few centimeters to few inches. So, our nuts and number is going to be um, much smaller, so it is going to be certainly valid. Okay. Now, let us say flow of air through a uh, microscopic device may be because we are almost on the verge, so may or may not be valid uh, to be safe aside it may not be valid. If you want to approximate you can take continuum hypothesis to be valid. Suppose this air flows through a, a nanometric device, then continuum hypothesis will not be valid. Your nuts and number will cross the limit of uh, 0 0.01 and you cannot uh, apply the equations which are going to derive in this particular course. Okay. Let us take another example of membrane uh, separation. The membrane separation, the size of the membranes are going to be let us say of the order of nanometer range. Once again, you cannot apply the continuum hypothesis uh, for this case. All these cases what we have discussed uh, so far, the nuts and uh, number, uh, the flow through nano device, the membrane separation etcetera, the nuts and number was uh, large because of the smaller characteristic length. The nano device has characteristic length of order of nanometers. Similarly, for the membrane process, the pores are order of nanometers. So, the nuts and number became larger because of the very small value of the characteristic length. Let us take another case where the nuts and number is large because of the large mean free path. Okay. That is what happens if you consider rarefied gases. What do you mean by rarefied gases? gases under extremely low pressure. So, you have very, very few molecules per unit volume. So, they travel a large distance between successive collisions. So, even though your space may be larger, but your mean free path is extremely large making the nuts and number having a, a larger value than thus causing breakdown of continuum hypothesis. Okay. So, the continuum hypothesis can break down either because of a very, very small characteristic length, which is usual case, usual case. Certain examples exist where the nuts continuum hypothesis breaks down because of the larger mean free path okay. and uh, that tells us the scope of uh, the equations we are going to discuss in this course, the whole of transfer phenomena course. Remember in the introduction, we said uh, three length scales are involved in a transfer phenomena uh, discussion. One is the macroscopic which are, are of equipment size, one is microscopic which is inside the equipment, one is the molecular length scale. So, these all revolve around the molecular length scale and that is not within the scope of this particular course. Okay. So, we have quantified this continuum hypothesis in terms of a nuts, and nuts and number and that is what we have done in this particular slide. Okay. What is the mathematical advantage? or mathematical implication of continuum hypothesis. Okay. The calculus which you have learnt 
in your uh, mathematics course itself can be used only if you assume continuum hypothesis that seems to be a strong statement. You cannot even use uh, calculus if continuum hypothesis not valid. So, even for your calculus to be used you require continuum hypothesis. What does it mean? The rate of change d by dx ok, integration all those are defined only if you assume continuum hypothesis. Let us see how is that ok. I think all of us are familiar with this definition of uh, derivative d f by uh, d x is equal to you take two spatial locations which are uh, separated by a small distance x and x plus delta x, take that function value at x plus delta x, take the function value at uh, x and then divide delta x, take the limit delta x tending to 0 that is how we define the differential of a function. Now, what is to be pay attention is the limit delta x tending to 0. When is this limit we are saying delta x tends to 0 which means that this function should be uh, describable at every spatial location that is what we defined as continuum hypothesis. If you are not assuming continuum hypothesis there will be some void spaces and you cannot take delta x tending to 0. The fact that we are taking delta x tending to 0 means that that function is should be definable at every every spatial location that means for example, let us say f is density I should be able to describe density at every spatial location only then you can even define a differential. We are going to come across a differential equations throughout this course and uh, moment you see a differential that is meaningful only if you assume continuum hypothesis that is the significant mathematical significance of assuming high. So far we have seen the physical significance of uh, a continuum hypothesis what we have seen is the mathematical significance mathematical implication. We may we will take this limit very frequently in this course, but you should remember that this limit assumes continuum hypothesis. Okay. Now similarly the definition of integral ok. Let us take this example let us say I have a uh, function and then um, I want to find the integral of this function between uh, two limits ok. Now, this integral can be represented by a summation. How do you do that? You have take values at uh, different uh, x, the values of function at different x and then multiply by the delta x sum over the number of increments and this integral is represented by the summation when you have this delta x the width of each segment tends to 0 or the number of elements which you consider are very very large which means that here also you say that this is valid when delta x tends to 0 which means it continuum hypothesis is to be valid. So, both for defining integral we will come across uh, uh, integral expressions when you discuss integral balance equations and differential when you discuss about differential balance equation when you write a macroscopic balance we will come across integrals, when you write a microscopic balance we will come across differentials and we should know that these uh, differentials and the integrals are valid only in the limit of delta x in 0 which requires the assumption of continuum hypothesis. And of course, all these implies that whatever property when I say property density, velocity etcetera, temperature all those should be continuous functions. Okay.